What's good? It's your boy Zara All Rights Reserve. We're going to get into this just now. In Pakistan, there was a suicide bomber that killed over at least 150 people. We're going to talk about this because we haven't talked about the taking of one's own life yet. And it's very imperative, you understand. So we're going to get to the readings of this and how it works. So we understand what these people get. Okay. And then I have longer reads. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 17. Be not over much wicked. Neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before your time? You're choosing to take your life early when you commit suicide. Okay. You're choosing to wipe yourself out. There's nothing uh, righteous about committing suicide. There's nothing righteous about bombings. It, whoever does this, it, it's wickedness. And we're going to talk about how wicked it really is. It sends you straight to hell when you commit suicide in any way, shape, and fashion. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected ending. So again, you're ending yourself pre prematurely, which is against the word of God. God tells you, do not do anything. I'm the one who gets revenge. I'm the one who does stuff. People get hasty and they either want to wipe themselves out or suicide bombing here, killing themselves along with others, which is evil. It's a sin. Okay. First Corinthians six, chapter six, verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. See, it's God's. You don't own yourself. So when you do this, it's a major sin. You get a, a terrible ending. We're going to get to it. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, which is your body, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. We are temples and we're doing that destroys yourself. No matter what religion tells you that it's OK, it's not. It sends you to the pit and it very much so has you held liable for all the people you take out because people it's wickedness again people are gods it's not yours to decide when to go psalms chapter 147 verse 3 he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds john chapter 12 verse 25 he that loveth his life shall lose it and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it into life eternal so when they blow themselves up they take themselves out and they lose eternal life right there and then you go straight to the pit no matter what good you did in life no matter what you were doing in life he does not want you in heaven no more deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death blessing and curse therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live so god even curses your children so when they blow themselves up they curse their family it, they commit an act that curses their family their entire lineage because you did that your kids have a terrible ending he does not have good for them unless they repent and turn to him second corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You glorify what God does to heal you when you're dealing with your infirmities. You don't wipe yourself out. That is infirmity. So you're choosing to go to hell rather than to stand in God's grace. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If these people that were in these situations we're serving God. He will protect them. But most of them don't serve Jesus Christ. They serve other gods, idols. So he lets it happen. People say, why? Because he lets it happen. Knowing that evil's involved and the people's hearts involved. John chapter 10, verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. If understand God's examining everybody involved in the situation. If there is sin amongst someone, he's less uh, more likely to back off than to step up and stop it because they're not serving him. That's the thing. Go let, let's get into it. First Corinthians chapter three It's the 16th to the 17th verse. Let's go. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If 
any man defiled the temple of God, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple are ye. In another book, the same exact phrase, the Bible connects. Don't be fooled. It connects. Okay. Psalms chapter 34, verse 17. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their trouble. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of it, uh, out of them all. God saves from all evil, including death. Understand, remember contrite. That means people that are really remorseful. He knows if you're remorseful or not. You could say, I'm sorry, all you want. God knows if you're remorseful. He'll judge you at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? I told you who owns your soul. I told you. Verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Again, he's letting you know. This is crazy. He's letting, he's doubling down. When he doubles down, he means it. So understand, everybody that does the suicide bomb goes straight to hell. They don't go to a paradise. It's a lie from, from the pits. That's why that re the religion these guys serve is evil. They, they're not even acknowledging their gods. They're just wiping themselves out. Your God's property, period, whether you like it or not. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Verse six, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. and He shall direct thy path. They're not getting directed right because they're not believing on Christ. They're believing on some deity that doesn't exist on an idol that they think is going to give them 40 virgins, 40 wives. They're getting nothing. You're getting tortured and you're getting. We're going to get to what's doing it again. We're working there. This is crazy. Like when I tell you, you're going to, yo, you're going to feel bad for everybody who made that decision. It's crazy. They're wiping themselves out for no reason. Okay? They're doing it because they're selfish. It's selfishness. All right, let's get it. Now, we're going to talk about nuclear weapons because when you blow yourself up, it's a large scale attack on multiple people. So it's considered a nuclear weapon. Literally, that's how the Bible translates it. Every All this is done through the translation of what's in the stories and what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And people say that Christians are weak, Christ believers, because that's what they call Christ believers, Christians. No, he tells us, look, you treat men how you're being treated. If they're doing stuff, don't do nothing back, but don't have any counsel with them. He tells you that we're going to get there. It's crazy. Now, this next one is the longer one, okay? This is an Exodus, okay? Exodus chapter one. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the joints of Jacob were 70 souls for Joseph was in Egypt already. And jo Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation and all the children of Israel were fruitful and they increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto this, his people, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemy and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmakers to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew and they were grieved because of the children of Israel and the Egyptian made made the children of Israel to serve with rigor and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. 
all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives of which the name of the one was Sephira and the name of the other Puh. And when he said, then ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then we shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come to un come in unto them. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And the Pharaoh charged all his people saying, every son that is born, ye shall cast them into the river and every ye daughter ye shall lead, save alive. Listen, don't matter what the Pharaoh said. God is above him. Don't matter what the president says. God is above him. Whoever's the ruler, God is above them, period. You don't do what God says, you'll pay the price. You'll pay the price. Even the person in charge got to adhere to God. Whether they believe in him or not, you got to do what God says or else he does what? In Egypt, what did he do? He brought plagues and the Pharaoh was scared, crying like, yo, we're going to get to that. The Pharaoh was scared. He was crying, begging for someone to help him. That's what God does to the leader. He will smite the leader. Just like he smoked the dude and told him, you smite him or else you'll be smite. God is in control of everything. Doesn't matter what's going on. You can see evil. You pray to God. If you don't, you'll get the price. He'll let it be your life. That's why you must serve God. You must stand on the word of God. If you do not, he will bring recompense to whoever does not stand on his word. And you know it and you don't stand on it. And you do what you what they say just because a leader's there, but you don't do what God says. You listen to God over anyone in charge. They know that. Even they know that. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't be saying what they're saying to other people to do wrong. He told them to do evil. But they said, we're the children of Israel. We don't follow you. We don't do what you said. We do what our God says. And he, he obeyed it. And he controlled his people. He couldn't control them anymore. God... Gave them what he took from them. He took their houses. He took everything. God gave it all to them and made them numerous to the point where he couldn't do nothing. He was scared. God is in control of all things. All things. Not one, not two, not a little bit. Everything, including your soul. So when you touch your soul, when you hurt yourself, when you do things to other people, you'll pay. You don't have to pay right away. You're going to pay. But suicide bombers pay right away. You pay right away. Straight to the pit. When you open your eyes, we'll get there. <laughs> We're on our way there. When you open your eyes, you're in hell immediately. Getting tortured. Like, it, before you even open your eyes, you're getting tortured. Because you already took a human life. Your judgment's fast. He knows where to send you. It's no longer a debate, do you go to heaven? You just did a suicide bombing. You go straight to hell. There's no debate. So in Pakistan, that guy that did that went straight to hell. God forbid the other people weren't with God. If they were, then they're in heaven dancing. But the end of the story, everybody who was not with God paid the price forever. Now they got eternity to think about their foolishness because they didn't do what God said. They did what they wanted to do. They were like, God, your payment isn't fast enough. I got to get revenge. You can't move that way. You move that way, he'll send you to your demise. You'll be done. It's over. He'll close your curtains. It's over. You know not to do these things. You know not to kill other people. You know not to hurt anyone, but you're doing it anyway. You're done. There's easy judgment. You, you were right before him. You're right in the pit for eternity. That suicide bomber, he's in hell screaming right now in torture, pain, thinking he was going to get 40 wives because their false religion. I'm going to say it again. False religion made them think they were going to get a, a grandiose prize for killing a bunch of people. That don't even make sense. He said, thou shalt not kill as a commandment. So why would you think you're going to get heaven? That silliness. That's why I said these other false religions is going to lead a lot of people to the pit, period. You don't want to listen to God. You're going to the pit, period. And when I say that, it's eternal, which means that when it comes time, 
You're going to the lake of fire, which is worse. It's worse. Their first death was painful. You have no clue how painful the lake of fire is. We're going to get there. It's <laughs> eternal. And it's so painful. Even the devil's in pain. The devil himself is going to be in eternal pain with you. He's so real. Listen, all rights reserved.